what is the purpose of a startup? Let us take a simple example to understand this. So what is the answer of this question? Option? So in order to understand the purpose of a startup, let us take like this. In normal 220 volts DC motor, maximum current rating 20 amperes. Armature resistance, RA, some point by ohms. Such a motor is started directly. Directly in the sense, if you want to start a motor, what you will do? This is the armature. Let us take a shunt motor. Now, there is a voltage source. There is a DC voltage source readily available. You simply directly connect it. If you connect it, as it is a 220 volts motor, if you apply 220 volts across the armature, at that instant, when you close the switch, at that instant, the speed of the motor is zero. When you close the switch, when you apply the voltage at that instant, the speed of the motor is zero. It starts increasing with time. At the instant of closing of switch, as the speed is zero, what is a back EMF? Zero. EV is also zero. Why? Because even though there is flux, at the instant of closing of even though there is flux, EV depends on what? Phi and N. As N is zero, EV is zero. EV is reduced whenever the conductors cut the flux. Now, as EV is zero, and even for cutting the flux, you have a critical speed value. It should cut at least for some value. Initial condition, EV is zero. When EV is zero, automatically IA will be excessively high. Now so, IA is excessively high. IA is equal to V minus EV by RA. Let us substitute these things. You have applied 220 volts across the motor directly. EV is 0. What is RA value? 0.5. What will be IA calculate? 40 ampere. Is it excessively high or not? Which will easily damage the motor. If the motor doesn't start quickly, if the motor starts quickly, Within 2, 3, 4 seconds, it's an inrush current. You can say it's a transient inrush current. So temperature rise comes with time actually. So within seconds if it starts, it may cause a high current, it may produce some dip in the other supply where it is connected. Motor may be safe. But if the motor starts slowly, only yoke will be remaining. Yes or no? If the motor starts slowly, the armature will disappear because 400 amperes current flowing into the armature of which design 20 amperes. If there is a 20 amperes armature, it can withstand short durations, it can withstand 2 or 2.5 times, but not like that 400 amperes. So, in order to control the starting current, in order to control the starting current in the absence of back I have told you yesterday, don't, you can't imagine, you can't expect a DC motor without back EMF. Since the back EMF is not there, the current is excessively high. So until unless the back EMF get develops into the motor, you have to regulate the current. You have to intentionally reduce the current. Once back EMF comes into picture, no need. Because if back EMF is too ten, automatically, what will be IA? Let us say back EMF is too ten. Back MF is what will be IA? It will be automatically coming into its rated value. Back MF will be always nearer to 220, 215 or 216 like that. Because what is the drop between them? What is the uh, difference between EV and V? Uh, yeah, yeah, only that. So finally, until the back MF gets developed, you have to insert some resistance which is progressively reducing in nature, which should be cut in nature. Why? Because 
Let us consider, you want to reduce the current. Two <coughs> options. One option is, you can reduce the voltage. Yes or no? You can reduce the voltage. Apply 10 volts, apply 20 volts, apply 30 volts. You can reduce or not? That is one option. But generally that is not economic. You can't have variable DC voltage sources across all the motors to apply slowly. The cheapest method, best method is to insert some resistance. That's easy, that's more cheaper, that's easy to, for a, as a customer point of view, if you deal. If you sell a motor, if you if you say it should be operated on only variable voltage, yes, again, you need to buy another DC voltage source which can be variable one with a huge control. That All those things are not effective. So, rather than this, rather than reducing the voltage directly, the best thing is insert some external resistance into the armature. Where is the high current going? Armature or field? Armature, not field. Remember, the field should be maintained at maximum value. Remember, the field should be maintained at maximum value. Yesterday we have discussed that, and the flux control method, the field rheostat should be counted in the minimum position. Minimum, because when field resistance is minimum, the field current is maximum, flux is maximum, and the motor starts with normal speed. So like that, you don't do anything with the field circuit. Field circuit should be ensured its rated flux. Is the point here? So starter has something to do with this armature circuit. What all you have to do is, you have to insert some resistance in series with the armature during starting. For example, let us say, you have inserted 30 ohms resistance. For example, what happens? If you insert 30 ohms resistance, what happens? 220 by 30.5. Definitely current came below the rated current or not. So like that, by simply inserting some resistance here, you can simply reduce the current. But inserting this resistance, the value of this resistance depends on load. Depends on rating of the motor, depends on the load torque of the motor. For example, you can reduce the current to any value. There is no restriction. Let us say, you can reduce the current to 1 ampere or 2 amperes. If the motor is starting with some load, you are starting the motor here. If the motor is starting with some load, definitely it requires some starting torque. Yes or no? There is some load on the motor, it requires some starting torque. If you reduce the armature current by this external resistance to a value less than the starting torque. Less than the starting torque. The torque is not developed in the motor. Will the motor start? No. So, while designing a starter, you can't simply reduce the current to a lowest value. Because in a motor, starting torque is important. In a motor, starting torque is important. It may be a traction motor, it may be motor and working on industries. Whenever the rating of the motors are increasing, whenever the load on them is increasing, definitely starting torque requirement will increase. So when you design this resistance, when you select this resistance, this resistance should not reduce the current below 1.5 times rated current. That resistance should not reduce the current of the motor below 1.5 times rated current. Means during starting, definitely Always on a motor, the starting shot should be more than road torque or running torque if it operates on load. Therefore, if you reduce below load torque, if you reduce below a value, lowest value, the motor may not start. Intentionally, you select this resistance in such a way that if IA is 10 amperes, for example, or if IA is 20 amperes, you select so that you may get 30 or 25 or 30 amperes, 1.5 times the current so that there will be good starting torque and the motor starts. Once the motor starts, within 5 seconds, what happens to that 1.5 times current value? Come down to rated value. Means you are not affecting the starting torque of a motor which is very important in the motor's operation. Let us consider, in the first instant, IA is equal to V minus EB by RA. Since EB is zero, you are adding some resistance. Let us assume 30. It's not a correct value, just for your understanding. 30. In the 
the next instant speed simply won't start at that instant it will take some time instant by instant by instant second by second now in the next instant ev reaches some value not rate at some value 0 to 50 let us say 0 to 50 in the next instant so 220 minus 50 by 0.5 do you require 30 no you don't require 30 because already on the numerator that the numerator has been decreased so you don't require 30 you require only around, around 25 enough let us say for example next when the back mf increases to 100 in the next instant when the back mf increases to 100 do you require 25 20 25 cut down to 20 when the back mf increases to 150 do you require the same 20 20 cut down to 15 finally when the speed reaches rated value when the speed reaches rated value as the motor starts motor is starting with the low current according to according to specification as the motor reaches rated value what you can do bro? finally you can cut down all the resistance in steps and finally the resistance across the armature becomes zero the only resistance will be only armature or resistance this is the basic purpose of a startup To be connected in series, to be connected in series across the armature, to be connected in series across the armature. In order to limit, in order to limit high starting currents. In order to limit high starting currents, next point. If a DC motor, if a DC motor is directly started, is directly started with the rated voltage across its terminals. With the rated voltage across its terminals, as the speed is zero, as the speed is zero, there is no back EMF. There is no back EMF. Consequently, current drawn by the armature, the current drawn by the armature is excessively high, is excessively high. As the motor starts quickly, as the motor starts quickly, Back EMF, back EMF, proportionally produced and controls the starting current, and controls the starting current. Small motors, small motors. Can be directly started. Small motors can be directly started. As the starting current is inverse current. As the starting current is inverse means you can take like transient. 
if it want to damage the motor, it requires time. Yes or no? If it want to damage the motor, it requires time. So, since it is simply passing like that within seconds, you can take the advantage and very small motors if you are asking. Can they be started? They can be started, not a problem. For example, if there is a fuse wire, if there is a fuse wire, for example, this rating is 10 amperes. This rating is 10 amperes. So this 10 amperes, if it flows for 1 hour or 2 hours, automatically, if 10 amperes flows for 1 hour or 2 hours, definitely after some time, this rating will be heated up and it will blow up, right? Or 10 amperes fuse where if you make 15 amperes, for example, you can't flow 15 amperes for more time. Yes or no? You can't flow 15 amperes for more time. So within some time, if you flow 5 amperes or 10 amperes, it can be for more time. So temperature comes with the time. So the inrush currents are with less time. You can allow the small motors. But medium and large motors can't be done like that. As the motor accelerates, within back MF, in those 10 seconds itself, you have to maintain some stunt. Right now. But for large motors, but for large motors, the high inrush current. will produce a voltage dip voltage dip you might have observed when you switch on motor or some geyser at your home the line will flicker you observe that fluctuate when high current flows in them automatically in the lines what comes into picture voltage drop that's, that's you'll observe so particularly when it comes to these motors, large rating motors, when they are started, definitely they start high, they draw high current from the supply, and these current when they come from the supply lines, it will produce a dip in the system. And if there are voltage sensitive loads across, automatically they will get affected. The other loads get affected. So what you have to do, you have to maintain some starter and you have to reduce the high starting current to reduce voltage dips. As well as it may damage as well as it may damage the brush commutator the brush commutator contact brush commutator contact and windings So now, the basic function of a starter is to insert starting resistance. This is true. But apart from this, apart from the basic function, there are three more functions incorporated in a starter for the smooth operation of the starter. The second one is field no volt release and the third one is overload release and the fourth one is field failure apart from the starting resistance, there are three more functions incorporated in a starter. Right now. Apart from the starting resistance, there are three more functions. There are three more functions in a starter. Apart from starting resistance, there are three more functions in a startup for its operation. And write down this. One is the basic one, other three are the added things. Without them, the starter can't smoothly operate. There are three types of starters.
3 points start off, 4 points start off, and 2 points start off. So remember one thing, 3.4 point, point is used for shunt as well as compound. Shunt as well as compound. 2 point start off is only for series. 2 points are is only for series. So while you read in books normally, the general confusion is you may be thinking 3 points are is for shunt motor, 4 points are is for compound motor, because the diagrams are illustrated in that way. It's not the it's it's not the meaning of that. Why you are using the 4 points are you understand clearly. So first don't draw, just listen first the diagram. You understand the diagram first. Let this be the motor. Which has a field wide. You can't directly apply the voltage across the motor terminals to start a motor. So, across the motor, this is the motor circuit, right? You can't apply V across directly. So, across the motor, you require to connect a starter. How many points you have? Three points. That's why three points starter. If you connect the starter across three, three points here at the back, you will see a motor only. On the top you will have a starter. The starter is connected to the motor across these three points. One is line, other one is field, other one is armature. There will be a starter here. So when you connect the starter across the three points, it is known as a three point starter. Keep the heading, three point starter. Starting resistance in series with what? Armature. This is voltage. This is voltage. When you switch on the motor at the first instant, all this resistance should be connected in series with armature. So, in a startup, there will be a startup arm to move. These are the studs. Why there is a studs like structure? Why the resistance is sectionalized like that means? When you contact with the first stud, all the resistance should be in series with the armature. When you move one by one, you are removing the resistance, you are cutting down the resistance. For example, let us consider, there is a start ramp like this. This is a start ramp which you can move. So this is off position. This is off position. And when you make this in contact with stud one, it's a contact, a brass stud one, then all this resistance should be connected to line. This end should be connected to armature. Then what is the meaning of that? When you start the motor with the first stud, voltage V is across the armature, applied across the armature through all the starting resistance. So definitely huge current comes into picture. But the huge current is regulated by all this resistance which is in series. Then the motor starts. After one instant, you will move from 1 to 2. After next instant, you will move from 2 to 3. So if you come from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, for example, what you are doing? 
If you come from 1 to 2, for example, this resistance has been isolated. If you come from 2 to 3, this resistance is isolated. 3 to 4, isolated. 4 to 5, total isolated. Finally, if you come here, finally, if this is come here, all the starting resistance has been simply removed from the armature. By that time, the motor reaches the rated speed and the back MF is rated and it will control the automatically the starting current, the current in the armature. Now, this is on position. The last step is on position. This is on position actually. Now, let us say the start is perfectly moved. We are operating. It is in the on position. Once it is at the on position, when the motor is running normally, suddenly let us think, the power has been failed, supply is not there. There is no power supply. Then, the starting arm is here, right? The starting arm is here, that position. Suddenly power supply failed. Intentional, unintentionally, let us consider it came back again. With, um, before you notice, the power again came back, it went off, it came back. Then when the supply comes, all the voltage is across the armature without any starting resistance. Yes or no? Because the starter arm, the handle is in the on position, last start. In that instant, no resistance is there. So the motor gets a huge current. Physically, there is a starter but no use. In order to make such particular operation to come at the starter, no volt release. No volt means no power, no supply, no volt. And the suddenly when the power supply goes, when it comes, these problems comes. We don't know when the supply fails, when it comes, exactly. So under such conditions, when there is no volt, the handle should come back to the off position. That's the target at the start. The handle should come back to the off position. Once it comes back to the off position, even when the supply comes, no problem. Yes or no? If, for example, if there is no power, if the hand will come back to the off position, if the supply comes, what happens? Nothing happens. Again, you have to come down to the starter and you have to on with your hand. Yes or no? No problem then. So, in order to ensure that, what we have to do is, you have to arrange a spiral spring-like structure inside. Means, the starter arm should be moved against the spring action. What is the spring action? If you stretch the spring, if you leave it, it will again go back. Now, when you bring this starter arm to this on position, again, you have to arrange one thing in such a way that that particular thing will hold the starter arm. How it will hold means again, you are making the use of electromagnet. You are taking the use of an electromagnet. Let us take an iron or a steel piece like that. Iron or steel strip. If this can act as a magnet, for example, if you have a soft iron piece attached to the handle, when you bring this to the on position, this will rest here exactly. And this magnet should hold, should attract this iron piece and the starter handle should be in the on position. The on position. In order to do that, if you want to make it act like a magnet, this is basically iron. If you want to make it like a magnet, what you require? Again a winding. And in that winding, what should flow? Current should flow. Now comes one more concept that is let us consider there is a brass strip like that, or strip like that inside. When you contact, when you contact the starter handle to start one, this under the starter handle there is a brush-like structure that will come in contact with this strip. That will come in contact with that, and under this it is directly in contact with the supply. 
So this supply is in contact with this. We have discussed that the field should be maintained at its normal value. The starter has nothing to do with, it should not do anything with the field. The starter has to ensure the field also at maximum value. Once you contact with start one, if this proper brush comes into the contact with this, if at this end is connected to F, what happens? <coughs> when you connect the starter handle to start one, all the resistance is in series with the armature. At start one, this brush will go and come into contact with this. Supply is directly here. The end is directly supplied. So this is connected to which point? Field. Can we say voltage is directly appearing across the field winding or not? Yes. Yes or no? Any reduction voltage? Any resistance? Anything happening? Nothing is happening. So starter is also ensuring the field to be maintained at its maximum, no regulation of the field, that is more important. So, this is what the structure is. And we have discussed before this, what is that? That should act like magnet. This should act like a magnet. If you want to act it like a magnet, when it comes here, when it want to hold, then you have to require some winding and the current should flow in that. Then, instead of directly connecting it, you do one thing. What happened? I am drawing two or three turns. That doesn't mean two or three turns. There are many number of turns. It acts like a strong magnet. Just a representation. What happens? The field current flowing in those turns will make it act like a magnet. When it acts like a magnet, when you bring this and come it here, it will attract. That's why it is known as hold on coil. Hold on oil is playing a vital role in the operation of a starter. The normal design will be in such a way that the hold on oil action, if the field current is 1 ampere, rated current is 1 ampere, when 1 ampere is flowing, 1 ampere is flowing, the normal design will be in such a way that the 1 ampere with these thousand number of turns will produce strong magnetic action in such a way that that magnetic action will dominate spring action. That magnetic action will dominate spring action. Then what happens? Automatically it will hold the handle. If the magnetic action dominates the spring action, it will be hold. If the spring action dominates magnetic action, what happens? It will come back. It will come back. So, under normal conditions, the magnetic action will dominate the spring action and it will be pulled like this automatically. So, this is known as pulled on coil. Suddenly, when the power fails, no voltage. When there is no voltage across the field winding, what is the current in that? Zero. What is the magnetic action? Zero. Then what happens to the spring action? Simply, it will uh, dominate and it will make the start ramp to come back to the opposition. That is known as no volt release. Next one is overload release. If you want to ensure overload release means under overloads, intentionally, unintentionally, when the current increase in the motor, again the start arm should fly back to the off position. Means again you are taking help of one more magnet. What is that means? Overload coil.
instead of giving directly this point to this point, again, this is again bypassed. This will act as a magnet. This magnetic action depends on which current. This magnetic action depends on which current. Line current or load current, both are same in machines, right? IL is equal to IA, approximately. So this depends on the load current or line current. Then, for example, this motor is designed for 20 amperes. It can be overloaded for up to maximum 25 amperes, let it be. The design will be in such a way that up to 25 amperes current flow in this particular winding, the magnetic action will be in such a way that it won't attract there is a movable iron piece hold on to a spring again. The spring tension is adjusted, the air gap is adjusted in such a way that up to 25 amperes, 120 percent overload, the magnetic action in this particular magnet won't attract, won't drive this onto top. But as the current increases, automatically magnetic action will increase. Automatically this, arm, this particular iron piece will attract it, will get attracted. It will be adjusted mechanically like that, attracted. So when it gets attracted onto that, you arrange in such a way, you have to arrange one thing like this. When it gets attracted, when it move up, it should short circuit the coil. Think for that condition. When this move up, the, when it is moving up, the movement should make a short circuit across the hold on coil. Simply, if the hold on coil is short circuited, what happens? If the hold on coil is short circuited, what happens? Instead of flowing the current into some thousand turns, it will simply bypass and will go, right? Yes or no? If it is short circuited, just imagine, if it is short circuited hold on coil, why it will go into thousand turns? It will simply enter like this because it will not flow into the resistance, right? Automatically this is rolled. zero resistance pass. Simply it will move and it will go like that. Will there be any magnetic action? No. no. Then what happens? Start around. Come back. Now, when it move up, you maintain. You have to create a short circuit across these two points. If you want to create a short circuit across these two points, you do one thing like this. When it move up, when it move up, make a triangle piece like that. Take two contacts inside. Make two contacts on that, which are projected outwards. Now, you simply connect one contact here. You simply connect the other contact here. What happens? Simple, short circuit. Don't say this. When it move up, you just imagine there's a short circuit here. Yes or no? When it move up, you just imagine there is a short circuit here. One line you draw. What happens to the current? It will simply bypass and the hold on action will not be there. It comes back. Right? This is overload release. This is overload release because what is the magnetic action depending on which current? load current or line current, both are same. Next, field failure prevention. Let us consider the flux is reduced or the field is opened like that. When, the, when under such conditions, the flux is reduced, what happens to the speed? Speed will rise, right? Speed will increase. So in order to protect the motor from field failures, particularly when suddenly when the field opens, when the flux becomes a low value residual flux, the speed will automatically rise in the motor. In order to protect such, such cases, 
we are intentionally making this connection flow through the field winding flow through the hold on coil is connected to this so the current flowing in the hold on coil is if hold on coil action is proportional to if only hold on coil is excited the magnetic is excited only through if suddenly when the field gets open before the motor rises its speed or when the flux reduces for some, for some well for some reason as the motor rises its speed before it does when if reduces what happens to the hold on coil action reduce what happened to the spring action it will dominate it will it is continuously making this to come back actually but it could not it could not whenever this action reduces it will simply dominate and it will make this to come back so when field failures when field gets opened or suddenly flux reduces those things can also be protected yes or no so all the three functions are incorporated in this data good Just to think, field open. Think field open. What happens? That's what happens. Yes or no? <laughs> the current flowing in the field winding is the current flowing in the hold on coil. Field open, no current in the field. What is the current in the hold on coil? Zero.
So the key point of this card. Field 
not significant to it. Depends on field current significantly. Because the hold on coil action, because the hold on coil action is directly proportional to field current is directly proportional to field current. It also provides no volt release. It also provides no volt release. When the power supply fails, when the power supply fails, during overloads, next point, during overloads, the overload relay. The overload relay picks up the overload relay picks up and short circuits and short circuits the hold on coil and short circuits the hold on coil to lose the magnetic action to lose its magnetic action <coughs> as the spring action dominates as the spring action dominates the starter arm will fly back the starter arm will fly back to the off position. Keep the heading, four points now. Isolate, hold on coil from the 
field winding means the field current is independent of hold on coil can we say that or hold on coil action is independent of field current since you connected the field winding through hold on coil that depends if you don't connect it won't depend starting resistance all the starting resistance should be connected in series with armature this is the normal connection the end is connected to armature always next this is the hold on coil hold on coil should be separated from field which can be variable some resistance which can be variable you can adjust the current to a value now when the motor is started will the field should get directly connected to voltage or not yes so when this comes here automatically when it contacts its end once listen once listen don't draw this part once listen this is connected to this end when you make a contact all the voltage is across field winding it has rated field current perfectly going like this what is the current flowing through the hold on coil it is independent of the field winding yes or no it is not if it has a different current now you can control it you can control it has a different separate current right so now you have to provide overload release overload release same concept when the overload relay picks up when the overload relay picks up it should short circuit what 
it should short circuit the hold on oil means this should go and connect it to this point any confusion if this move up what it will do these two points are shorted means these two points are shorted this is short circuit so what happens to hold on coil action lost we come back overload release no voltage release this is also connected to the voltage only right and there is no voltage across the terminals what happens to hold on coil action zero it will come back but what happened to field failure prevention field failure prevention is not offered by this data let us assume flux became zero field open as a fault condition motor will race away yes or no flux open now when it comes to such conditions as the hold on coil action is independent of the field current in spite of the flux is there or not the hold on coil action will be always like that because its current is different so field failure preventions are not detected are not prevented here right but it can be used for what field weakening speed control method this is exclusively for field weakening speed control method when you operate a motor exclusively under that particular condition you have to go for four point start only If you observe how many points you have from a four point start one coming out four
when the motto is subjected to when the motto is subjected to when the motto is subjected to feel the weakening feel the weakening speed control method field weakening speed control method a three point starter a three point starter doesn't support the operation doesn't support the operation because it's hold on coil action its hold on oil action is proportional to its field current is proportional to its field current for such speed control for such speed control four point starter is essential underline for such a speed control four point starter is essential for shunt or tubulative compound motors for shunt or tubulative compound motors the hold down coil is the hold down coil is isolated isolated from the field winding from the field winding and connected to an extra additional point and connected to an additional point <coughs> due to which any variation in the field any variation in the field doesn't affect doesn't affect its hold on coil action doesn't affect its hold on coil action so what is the drawback of that it also not provides any feel failure prevention but acceptable why because feel failures are not frequently done feel failures means feel gets opened all those such things are not frequent faults on the motors those are like accidents only those are not very frequent and you can this particular starter is accepted even though there is no feel failure prevention feel failure prevention is absent field failure prevention is absent but it is acceptable but it is acceptable as they are not so frequent in nature as they are not so frequent in nature
One Santa, four one Santa. For any model, Santa or Kaupo. But two point Santa is only for series motors. Series motors, as you know, the field and the armature are in series. Since both are in series, we will have only one point across this. So that is this point. As well as there is one point line terminal. Now the starter is connected across these two points. That's why it is known as two-point starter. Now, the construction is as similar to the other three-point and four-point starters, but there is a basic difference in the construction. What is the basic difference means? Under normal operating condition, the hold down coil is under short circuit. 
under normal operating condition the hold on coil is at the short circuit by the overload relay yes or no this is contacting these two points when it contacts it will maintain the current flow from the hold on coil into the field at the armature it is maintaining connection with the supply actually during overloads when the overload relay picks up when the overload relay goes up what happens to these two points open or short circuit open once they gets open what is the current in the hold on coil zero what is the magnetic action zero it will come back overload release no volt release if there is no voltage across this what is the hold on coil action zero will come back field failures say if the field gets open is what is the meaning of that if the field gets open means there is no connection for the hold on coil to get complete and no current no current means automatically it will come back again all the three functions are successful apart from starting resistance inserted across in series with the armature so finally this starter basic construction difference is under normal conditions the overload relay makes a contact under overload condition when it goes up it will it will isolate the two contacts but here under overload conditions in four point or three point starter under overload conditions when it moves up it will short circuit that's the basic difference third one is what's the reason never start a series motor without any load right without any load or series motors when they are operating normally in industries if there are built drives particularly with the built drives means across the shaft there are built built drives so series motors are not preferable for that why because suddenly due to aging after 3 or 4 years the belt will expand and if the belt slips away in the opposite of the belt slips away what happens no load right so the motor speed will become dangerously high so under such things when the motor speed becomes dangerously high what happens means since this is the load suddenly when the load is not there what will be the current drawn by the armature no load very small current from where this current is coming observe no load very small current from where this current is coming from the supply only it is coming like this it is coming like this this arm is here right so it is coming like this coming through hold on coil only so what will be the hold on coil action small current what is the hold on coil action very small what will be the spring action do now it will dominate it will make the arm to fly back when you sudden when sudden discharge when belt slips away it will protect or not definitely will protect right or wrong so that protection is also incorporated since the hold on coil is in series with the armature like that right so all the functions are perfectly all the four are there in that apart from that sudden discharge of loads suddenly when the motor comes on no load it will automatically pull for example if you start a series motor on no load what happens if you start a series motor on no load if you try to start it when you move to the last start what is the current flowing at the end no load small current so if you leave it will again come back because the, the electromagnet there is not holding it will again come back now generally the questions one type of question is if there is a three point starter can you use this for a series motor or not means if the question is asked like this if it is a frame like that if there is a three point starter can a three point starter be used to a series motor you can use it with some modification you can use it what is that modification means let us think like this you have a three point starter with you 
a box like this. This is all the three parts are inserted in this perfect design. Now, you know there are three terminals. One is L, one is L, one is A. Three terminals you have. If you want to connect this to a series motor, there is a series motor readily available. This is the series motor. There is a field winding at present. There is a field winding at present. So this is the series motor. So there will be series motor is this one. Now what you will do across the line terminal, you will connect line. This is across the armature terminal, you will connect F. Why? Because across the armature, what is there? This resistance. This resistance to be inserted in series with what? Armature, field, or everything is same now. There are only two points for a series motor. If you have a series motor with you, you will have only two points. Because this should be connected to L, this should be connected to A. Finished. What is F now? left unconnected. F is left unconnected. There is no place for that F to connect across the motor. Now, if you start, this is the starter, three point starter, three point starter used to a series motor. If you start, when you give contact to first start, will the motor run or not? Will the motor run or not? It will run, no problem. Why? Because it is in contact, all the resistance is in series with the arc major, field winding arc major, it starts running with less current, normal current, it starts running. So when you move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and finally here, the motor race, it picks up, it will go to its rated speed and finally you are here. Now if you leave, if you leave, what happens? The start round will come back, why? Hold on coil is not closed. Hold on coil is not closed. If you want to hold on action, the hold on coil should be closed. Then only current will flow. Then only it can operate. So if you want to make the hold on action and if you want to operate this to a series motor, what should be the modification? Means the hold on coil is across F. So F should be closed, means F should be connected to negative. Because the other point is connected to which supply? Positive. Positive. So other point should be connected to negative. So the hold on coil is closed. Now it will operate. That is the operation of a three point startup across series motor. Right. Practically, I am not telling that, listen, three point starters are taken like this and they are used for series motors. If you want, you can use. In the questions, in the objective questions, if you are asked, can a three point starter be used to a series motor? You have to say yes. Is it clear? How to say yes. What is the modification? M should be connected to supply, otherwise you can't use. Right? Two point starter. It is exclusively for series motors. It is exclusively for series motors. It serves all the four functions. It serves all the four functions. It offers all the four functions. What are the four functions? No need, no need to write. Already you wrote all the four functions already. It also, it also provides protection against protection against sudden discharge of loads. against sudden discharge of loads. A 
process shunt. As the motor, as the motor, speed becomes dangerously high. As the motor speed becomes dangerously high. So technically it is called as the racing condition. Dangerously high, racing condition. Next, a three point startup, write a note. A three point startup can be, a three point startup can be connected to a series motor. But with, but with closing the F terminal, closing F terminal with the negative point, with the negative point. So what is the construction and difference between 3.4 point and series means? As the overload relay picks up, it will open. As the overload relay picks up, it will short circuit. The same question is asked in question number 53, once observed. type of start of a DC series motor means for a DC series motor which, which starter is used? Three point starter is used. First statement is asked is telling something about three point starter. 
second statement is telling something about two points start up both have no connections individual statements both are individual statements that's all no so both have right things here so as you know in a in a series photo when the whole when the on sun distance in such a manner that short circuit when the wall already picks up it's true the three points start up when the wall already picks up it will short circuit it is true next in a dc series photo to guard against freezing automatically so b is the answer next one control the speed of a dc shot motor of over a power base pin or reasonably wide range that the motor must have compensating winding in the full winding using four point starter all the food is so four point starter see another important point here is regarding four point starter and regarding compensative winding don't think that compensative winding or if you are given like that compensative winding in proposal to go for compensative winding also why because you have written under compensative winding when the machines are operating under high speeds what's the color when the machines are operating under high speeds why high speed when it is high speed automatically there exists a flash over Yes or no? You are high peripheral speed. So what is the speed control? In this speed control, you are making the motor to run at a very very high speed. So automatically you have to go for all the speed. A is that. Next seventy-three. It's clearly given. Field weakening control.
टीचर का धीरे धीरे टेम्परेचर हाई हो रहा है 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 ब्रेक के बाद ब्रेकिंग करेंगे A simple start like this. This diagram is important like this. Both are same. The start are having four starts. If you move from one to two, two to three, three to four, what is exactly happening? I have for easy understanding how a present on a horizontal view like this. Nothing but 
V by R1. This is nothing but V by R1. Why? So, this current is playing a wider role. The starting current is playing a wider role in the start of the motor. As you know, the torque developed in the motor is due to the current in the motor. You have to select this starting current according to the starting torque requirement only. General value is, as you know, the starting torque should be always more than the low torque. General value is, if I is the rated value, rated current value, the starting current should be at least 1.5 times I. This is general value. But if you are asked, the starting resistance, all that R1, V is constant, V is supplied is constant. The selection of R1 should be in such a way that the starting current will produce a starting torque definitely more than low torque. First point. If the motor starts with load, if the motor starts with load, its starting torque should be higher, more, its starting torque should be more than <coughs> load torque. Generally, Generally, the starting current is 1.5 times, 1.5 times the load current. Remember this not fixed value. That depends on the motor, that depends on the application. Sometimes it may go to two times also. That depends. General value is 1.5, at least 1.5 is there. Means what I want to convey is you can't simply keep the resistance as you require because it will definitely affect the starting torque and the motor doesn't start actually. That's why. That's the first one. Second one is right now. It also controls, it also controls the acceleration time. the acceleration time as the motor starts as the motor starts during starting next one during starting as the starter handle as the starter handle passes between the studs, passes between the studs, the current, the current undergoes, the current undergoes a transient change undergoes a transient change between a maximum and minimum value. A transient change between maximum and the minimum value. What is the maximum current here? 
student takes, this is the maximum current. V by R1, this one. Now what is happening here means, once you listen. When you are at stat 1, the motor just started. EV is no, not there. EV is not there. So, the current I1 is equal to V by R1. But after one instant, some instant of time, what happens? EV comes into picture. You are at start 1 only. See, you won't start simply like this. The practical starting of a motor will be first you contact, make a contact with 1. Next, after instant, you will come with one with 2. Next up three, next four, finally will come there. If you simply rush like that, it provides a huge sparking and automatically the fuse will flow. You have to start the motor gradually. Now, that's the practical way of starting. Now, you are at start one. The current is this. At start one only, after that instant, back MF gets developed. Let us say, after an instant, What happens to numerator part? Previously V minus 0, EV is not there. Now there exists some EV value. Let it be EV1. Let it be EV1. So some value came into picture. What is the resistance at start 1? R1 only. You are at start 1. You are at start 1. Resistance is R1 only. Now tell me, can you write I1 here? Can you write I1 here? No. Why? It is decreased or increased? Decreased. That's it. Let it be I2. So, Listen, you are at start 1. When you are at start 1, current is what? I1. When you are at start 1, current is I1, this value. After some instant of time, what happens to the current? Degrees. I2. This is after some instant of time. So remember, the speed is increasing. Right? Slowly the speed will increase like that. This is speed. Now, listen. You are at start 1. After some instant of time, I am telling time, current has been decreased to I. Now, general procedure, what you will do means, after some instant of time, you will grow from 1 to 2. You are not get 1 only, after some instant you will go from 1 to 2. I am writing clearly. After an instant, I2 is this. Right? Now, you will move the stand from 1 to 2 stand. In that point of time, from 1 to 2 as you move, see here practically, when you come from 1 to 2, in that specific time, there is no change in speed or EV. When you come from 1 to 2, what is the time taken? Very small time. In this time, due to inertia of the motor, there is no change in speed. Same speed is there in that time, and what is back EMF value? Same, because back EMF different speed only. So in this time, in this instant of time, in this particular instant, there is no change in back EMF for speed. Now, when you come from 1 to 2, there is change in speed after an instant. Remember, there is change in back EMF after an instant. 
when you come from 1 to 2 in that short period, in that instant, there is no change in back EMF. Voltage has any change? No. But what is the change? R1 became R2. R1 became R2. Yes or no? When you go to step 2, R1 isolated. R1 became R2. What you will write here? So we can't write I3, I4, I5 like that. If you write, you can't get, you can't solve because you want the relation between maximum and minimum values. Finally, you will understand to design the starter resistance. So if you take I3, I4 like that, you can't get anything. So finally, we think like this. The current is varying between some maximum and minimum values before it reached down to normal value. So, as the resistance is decreased, on the numerator there is same value, same value again, the current will increase or not? Yes, Definitely increase. So, let me begin again. When you move from stud 1 to 2, it's stud 1 to 2. Now, what is I1 by I2? Any confusion in this? Don't write I1. Is this greater than I2 or less than I2? Greater than I2. So let it be I3. Let it be I3. If you read I3, you are getting many current values. You cannot have an expression to solve this. Definitely some current here you are getting more than I2. It will rise up. So before reaching a steady state value, the current is fluctuating between maximum and minimum. Make it like that. One maximum value is I1, one minimum value is I2 and it, 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 it will fluctuate between that and finally it will regulate. Why it is fluctuating clearly we have here. Why it is fluctuating clearly here I am showing. First it is V by R1. After some instant reduces. At that instant you just move from 1 to 2. When you move from 1 to 2 in that instant will there be change in EB? No. But suddenly there is change in resistance. Then what happens to current? Fluctuates or not? So that fluctuation I am concentrating in. So let it be I1. Then, what is I1 by I2? I1 by I2 is V minus EV1 by R2 into R1 by V minus EV1. What is the value? This R1 by R2. Back MF increases. 
what happens to I1? Definitely it should decrease. Definitely it should decrease. So, again from I1, you came from 1 to 2, you are at 2 now. You are at 2 now. After some instant of time, like this, after some instant, again, see it is taking some, some time here. It is simply rising without any time because 1 to 2. 1 to 2, no time, it rises like that. So it will take some time here again. So it came down to I2 again. With some value. Then what happens? At start 2, when you go from 2 to 3, what happens to resistance value? Let us say at start 2. Let us write clearly. You came from 1 to 2, now you are at start 2. After an instant. Definitely EV develops. So, you don't know what is the current, but let us write V minus EV2 by R2. Resistance no change. You are at start 2 only. V minus EV2 by R2. What happened to current? Increased or decreased? Increased or decreased? Decreased. So let it be I2. See, the problem is you can't make it the other way currents. Which cause between I1 and I2, if you make it I3, I4, I5, I6, the values are very less. This transient current, the values are very small. If you keep on changing the values I3, I4, I5 between maximum and minimum, you won't get any expression to solve this. To grade the resistance, you won't get. So what if we are generalizing initial 5 seconds or 10 seconds in that transient period when you move from 1 to 2, the current is fluctuating between some maximum and minimum value. If you keep like that, if you analyze like that, you will get an equation and you can finally solve it. So again, the current decreased. Why current decreased means EV2 has been increased. Now, after an instant this happened, what you will do now? You are at start 2. After an instant this happened, what, what you will do now? You will go from start 2 to 3. From start 2 to 3. When you come from start 2 to 3, immediately at that instant, is there any change in back here? No. You are coming from 2 to 3. In that instant, no change in back here. So, EV2 will be EV2. But what happened to R2? R2 became R3. So, V minus EV2 by R3. Now tell me, current increase or decrease? So, let us make it again. Some value between. Maximum value is I1. So, this is I1. Now again, I1 by I2, do that. What do you mean? If you take again, I1 by I2, again you are getting R2 by R3. Why you are analyzing, you will finally understand with this equation only. If you make it I3, I4, I5, finally you won't get that. Now where you are exactly at start 3. You are at start 3 now. You came from 2 to 3. You came from 2 to 3. When you come from 2 to 3, what happened to current? Increased or not? In this instant of time, 2 to 3, there is no change in time. In that instant, let us say, it will again go up. It is that time will go up. I1. So again, after 3, what happens? You are at 3, right? From 2 to 3. Now at 3, after some instant, again, back EMF develops. If back EMF develops, again the current will reduce. So this diagram is asked many times in the exams. It will be given in many, many waveform shapes. What is the starting current variations in the start top? It will be like this only. You will be given like this. Many waveform shapes will be given. Four options. Don't pick anyone, only the option is this. It should be like this.
So no, again, I'll write here. You are at start three. You came from two to three, right? You came from two to three. You are at start three. Again, I'm clearly writing at start three. After an instant. What happens? E B increases. Let it be E B three. V minus E B three. By what is the resistance at start three? Same R three only. Right? What happened to the current? Increased or decreased? Decreased. So let it be I two. Now. You are at start. What you will do now? Finally, you will make go from start three to four. Three to four. Then, within that change, is there any change in back gamma? In that E B three remain E B three only. But what is the change in the resistance? R three becomes R A. R three becomes R A. So what is the current now? So before it reaches a normal steady state value, this is the normal steady state value. Let us say before it reaches a normal steady state value, it will undergo variations in this waveform shape. Only between some maximum and minimum in the transient state. If you see a start up practically, while you go from one two to two to three, there is a huge sparking coming inside. If you observe any time, always there will be some sparking between start and start. While you are using brass means, it can withstand sparkings. So when you come from one to two to two to three, the transient current will be flowing through the air, losing the contact. High current from between maximum and minimum. So when you go from three to four, again this is R. So what is now I one by I two? What is I one by I two? Tell me. What is I one by I two? Means it is again. It is nothing but R three by R A. In order to get such a relation to design the starting resistance, we made this. Remember, if you want to keep, for example, listen one one simple thing. Listen, if you are a designer, if you want to design a starter, having five studs, having four sections. Let us say, you want to design a starter having five studs, four sections. Let us say, simple stuff. Then. You can easily calculate R1. It's not an issue. To a motor, they will tell you in my motor I require 10 amperes current or 15 amperes current because this is the rated current. It should it should have at least 1.5 amps. So 15 amperes I want. Then what you will do? V is 220 always. Let us say some voltage you are giving. About the voltage, you will calculate R is some value. You will calculate R1. It's not at all an issue to calculate R1. For example, if you got R1 as 20 ohms, for example, let us say that 20 ohms will not be sectionalized 5, 5, 5, 5, or 4, 4, 4, within the five sections. Is the point clear? If you keep 4 ohms, 4 ohms, 4 ohms, 4 ohms equally, there is no use of all these things. It is grading. The resistance is. Graded. It is graded according to the first section will have some more value, second section some less value. Like that, it is graded. How it is graded means depending on this analysis. The current is fluctuating between maximum and minimum values before it reaches normal value. Think like that technically, and you have a relation like this between R1, R2, R3, R4, or R5 or R6 like that. What is R1, R2? Clearly, you know between the starts, those values, and now. If you start writing a relation like this, let us say I1 by I2 is some value k. 
let us imagine for solving i1 by i2 is some value constant k. Then what is R3? R3 is k times R8. R3 is k times R8. Next, what is R2? What is R2? K times R3, which is nothing but, which is nothing but K square. If you substitute in place of R3, K, R, A, it is K square, R, A. What is R3, R1? R1 is nothing but R2 into K. What is R2? R2 is k square r a, so it becomes k q r a. Finally, you came to first one, right? Now, let us generalize like this. R1. What is R1? You know this. Initial value to select the current by r a. R1 by R A is equal to K. I will make you to solve a problem at the last. How to design the starting resistance? Then you clearly understand with the problem. But this is required. R1 by R A, R1 by R A is equal to K. Now we will generalize this. We have taken a simple four starts, three sections. We will generalize this. If you generalize this equation, in place of KQ, if you are designing a practical starter having n starts, you will get k power n minus 1. In general, in general, if a starter has n studs, if a starter has n studs, there will be n minus one sections. There will be n minus one sections. Therefore, R1 by R A is equal to K power N minus 1. How this formula will help you to design the starter sections, you will clearly understand with the problem at the last. R1, R A, no values, you can easily calculate. How do you will understand? So this is starter resistance gradient. Once you know k value, if you substitute here k, you know r a, what you will know? r b. Next you will know r 2, next you will know r 1. Now if you want, resistance of each section, now if you want, resistance of each section, how much resistance to be inserted in this one? Between 1 and 2 means r 1 minus r 2. How much resistance should be inserted between 2 and 3 means it is R2 minus R3, like that. I'll be able to solve a problem the last time. Keep the heading breaking. सबसे बड़ा बॉस सबसे बॉस तो ये सबसे बड़ा बॉस मंडा का बॉस मनोवैज्ञानिक 
Training is done to intentionally stop the motor. Breaking is done to intentionally. Breaking is done to intentionally stop the motor. Or sometimes to control the speed. Or sometimes to control the speed. There are two types of breakings. There are two types of breaking. Number one, mechanic. Just write down a point on the mechanic. Write down what is it? All the kinetic energy. All the kinetic energy in the rotating parts, in the rotating parts, is dissipated as is dissipated as heat, which produces noise. Maintenance and repairs. If you don't understand any particular term, once refer the board. <laughs> High wear and tear. Maintenance and repair. And doesn't offer smooth breaking. And doesn't offer smooth breaking. Number two, electric breaking. Listen, basic electric braking is, for example, let us consider, if you want to switch off that fan, if you switch it off, if you isolate the fan from the supply, that itself is breaking. If you want to stop that fan, what you are doing? Switching it off means what? You are isolating the motor from the supply. That itself is electric braking, but it won't stop the motor. It doesn't stop. See. They have switched off, but it didn't stop them. It is continued to running because of its inertia. But within that time, in the industries, it should stop at the required instant. So you require additional electric braking technologies. Basic electric braking is isolating the motor from the supply, but it won't stop the motor. The motor continues to run. If the motor is effectively designed, more time the rotation will be. Because of the rotational losses are very less, it continues to rotate, good bearings, all those things. So, if you want to stop the motor quickly, rapidly, at the desired instant, then comes additional braking methodologies. Right. Electric braking. Basic braking is isolating. Basic braking is isolating the motor isolating the motor from the supply isolating the motor from the supply but doesn't stop the motor 
but it doesn't stop the motor. At the required instant, at the required instant, quickly, this requires additional electric braking. This requires additional electric braking methods. There are three types in that. Number one, Direction. You are clockwise or anti-clockwise. You can make it orbit in any direction. 
let us consider the motor running in one direction. As you know, the motor draws current, IL. The armature is drawing current, IA. And there is field current, ISH. And in the armature, there is EV development. EV. Why is EV developed in the armature? Because of the speed and because of the flux. Because of the speed and because of the flux. This is the original condition. What you have to do in this braking means same motor. You remain field winding connected to the supply. No change in the field winding. Field winding remained connected to the supply, but armature is disconnected. But armature is disconnected. If you leave it open, no use. You have to connect it to a rheostat. That's why it is called a rheostatic field. You have to connect it to a rheostat. It is simply disconnecting the armature from the supply in a running motor, leaving its field connected to the supply. What is the field current in this case? ISH. What is the field current in this case? Any change? Any change in the flux? No. See, 100 ohms resistance is there. You are applying 200 volts. What is the current flowing? You think this circuit here and there, same voltage, same current flows. Don't think that the plug filter is not the same case. Now, what is happening means, in this case, when it is running in one direction, when this is running in one direction, the current is flowing like this. The current is flowing like this. So, the torque is proportional to phi into IA. When you disconnect the armature from the supply, only that, at that instant, is the armature running or not? It continues to run at the same speed. So, will the, in the same speed or not? Same speed, same direction, running. So, will the armature conduct was cut flux or not? Definitely. When the cut flux, what is produced? EG, like EV, it is produced because it is running, right? So now it has EV, same direction, same thing, EV is there. At the instant of breaking, I am talking. We are interested whenever you disconnect the armature from the supply, at that instant, in the armature, there will be same EV. Why? Because EV depends on flux and speed. Flux is same, speed is same, it will be there. If you don't connect a resistance across these two terminals, then no current flows, that's all. No current flows. When you connect some resistance, automatically EV is driving a current to flow, that's all. EV is driving a current now. So what is the direction of current? It will come like this. Right? Previously, the current in the armature is going down. Now, the current in the armature is going up. In both the cases, the current has a reversal in the armature. The armature has a torque. Current carrying conductors placed in the magnetic field experience a force. If the current is downwards, one force. If the current is upwards, opposite force. Previously there is positive torque, now there will be 
negative torque and the motor won't rotate like that. It will simply quickly stops. Why? Because if a motor is running in clockwise direction with a positive torque, if the in that motor if there is a negative torque, the motor wants to run in the opposite direction. So first it has to come down to zero. That's it. It should come down to zero. Otherwise it can't go to minus. That's all. So when it comes down to zero, it can't go to zero, but it quickly simply stops. When it stops, what is the V? Zero. What is the current? Zero. It simply stops. This is real starting break or dynamic break. Right now. One more point to make another way to understand. If you both, if you isolate both field as well as armature, what happens? If you isolate both field as well as armature, it is nothing but switching of the supply. It is nothing but switching of the motor. Both are either it will it will it will continue to run stop at its own time. But we require immediate quick stop. This is the dynamic trigger. Right now. Disconnecting the armature, disconnecting the armature from the supply, leaving, leaving its field, leaving its field connected, leaving its field connected. At the instant of breaking, at the instant of breaking, there will be induced EMF. There will be induced EMF. EB. There will be induced EMF EB which drives a breaking current which drives a breaking current into the rheostat into the rheostat externally connected into the rheostat externally connected if you are asked what is the breaking current value, what you will say? At the instant of breaking, there is EB which is driving a current. So what is the current in this circuit means EB by RA plus R external. That is the breaking current. Why you are calling it as breaking current means in the opposite direction. Previously this is IA, now this is IB. is exactly opposite to right now. This is this is exactly opposite. To the armature current, to the armature current in its original direction, in its original condition. in its original condition. Consequently, consequently, torque reverses, torque reverses, and the motor stops quickly, and the motor stops quickly.
Reversing the Archive of Polarity. Reversing the Archive of Polarity. Reversing the Archive of Polarity. Or terminals. Or terminals across the supply. Or terminals across the supply. Through an external resistance. Through an external resistance. In order to control. In order to control. Breaking current. In order to control the breaking current, which becomes more, which becomes more than the normal, which becomes more than the normal value. Now again, this is the original condition of the motor. The motor is running normally. Original condition, any direction, original condition. Remember, when you apply B across these points, this is plus, this is minus. When E B is like this, this V is giving you the current like this. I A E B both are opposite. Both are opposite. V I A is in the same direction. E B is exactly opposite to that. So. E B is opposite to that. So while you write I A is equal to V minus E B by R A. We write V minus E B by R A. Now, since E B and V are in opposite directions, V minus E B. Since E B and V are in opposite directions, as the current is coming opposite to E B, both are opposite directions. Now. Plug-in means reversing the armature polarity, not disconnection. You have seen previously this point is connected to negative. This point is connected to negative. Now you have to connect this to positive. And this to positive. Now this point is connected to positive. You have to connect it to negative. That is what is called plug-in. Just plug it. Reverse. <coughs> now observe. Previously, plus minus, plus minus. This is also plus minus across R major plus minus. So both are opposing in nature. Both are opposing in nature. Now plus minus, minus plus. What they will become? Add or not? Add or not? So like that. When you reverse the armature polarity, V is plus minus. Previously, this is also like that they are opposing. So direction has been reversed. And if you observe, the current is flowing, coming like this, and it will flow like this. Observe. Previously, current is flowing down to the armature. Now, how is the current flowing? It is going up like this. What happened to the current? What happened to the current in the armature conductor? Reversed or not? Is it same? No, reversed. If the current reverses, what happens to the torque? Reverses. What happens to the motor direction of rotation? Reverses. But here there is a danger of motor going towards negative speeds. Here there is a danger of motor going towards negative speed. Why? Because the current you are applying it is not disconnected. It is in the connection only. So as you apply the voltage, as it goes like this, automatically the motor torque is reversed. Let us say the motor is running at 1500 RPM in clockwise direction. It want to rotate at minus 1500 RPM in anti-clockwise direction. So first the 1500 RPM, because of the opposite force, it comes down to zero. After that, it should go like this. 
So what you have to do means, when it comes down to zero, not only at zero, when you come down to 50 RPM or 100 RPM or near zero speeds, you will apply mechanical braking. This braking requires additional mechanical braking. Additional mechanical braking plus electric braking makes the system more effective. If you apply mechanical braking at 1500 RPM, that is not at all effective. If you apply mechanical braking at a 0 or 10 or 50 RPM near 0 speeds, the braking is very effective. So what is happening is whenever you reverse the terminals, the RMH of current is flowing in the opposite direction to its original. Original positive torque because of the current direction. Now, the current in the conductor has been reversed. Flux is same. Current carrying conductor is placed in the magnet field experience force. That force depends on the current direction. Previously positive force, now negative force. So now the current and EB are in the same direction. So IA and EB are in the same direction. So it becomes V plus EB by RA. The voltage across this armature of V and EB, previously they are opposing. If you say, take, if you take two batteries, let us say like this. To understand, if you simply take like this, there are two batteries like this. If they are plus, minus, plus, minus, what is the, they are opposing or adding? If you take plus, minus, plus, minus, for example, now if you reverse it, what happens? If you say, for example, if you connect a voltmeter, this is the winding, this is the winding. If you connect a voltmeter across this winding, if it is plus, minus, plus, minus, this will deflect zero. It will deflect zero. This is a better example. If it is a deflect, zero. If you reverse the winding, what happens? Double. Why? It is adding in nature. So like that, if you reverse the winding, what happens? This will add. So V plus EV by RA. So once IA is V plus EV by RA, IA becomes large. To control this IA, that is breaking current, what you have to do now? You have to insert some resistance. this particular plugging and you did an expression like this. The current flowing through the armature during plugging. The current flowing through the armature during plugging IA is equal to V plus EV by RA plus R external. What is the voltage across the armature during plugging? means it is V plus EB. What is the voltage across the armature during plugging means it is V plus EB. And what is the current flowing to the armature during plugging means it will be if you observe question number 43-44 you understand the importance of these relations. To solve a problem regarding plugging, you require those relations. Let's read question number 4344. To solve this, I'll give you a break. To answer question number 43, no need to solve. You can easily pick the answer. To solve question number 43, no need to solve. You can easily pick the answer. So you have to make a note there. Under plugging, you have to make a note. Due 
to reversal of our nature current. Due to reversal of our nature current directly. Due to reversal of our nature current directly. The torque reverses. And the motor wants to run. And the motor wants to run in its opposite direction. And the motor wants to run in its opposite direction. Due to which it come near. Due to which it come near. Zero speeds near zero speeds where mechanical braking is applied. Where mechanical braking is applied. Otherwise, the motor continues to run. Otherwise, the motor continues to run in the opposite direction. In question number 43, B is given as 240. Motor draws 15 amperes. Motor is drawing 15 amperes. Armature resistance 0.5. And RSH is given as 80. So what is ISH? ISH is V by RSH, which is nothing but 240 by 80, which is 3 amperes. If ISH is 3, automatically IAT is IL minus IS which is 12 amperes. And what you are asked, what is the voltage across the armature during plugging? So what is EB? EB is V minus IA R A, which is 240 minus what is IA value? Well, what is RA value? 0 0.5. So it will be 234. You know, during plugging, the voltage is V plus EV. That is 240 plus 234 will be 474. Next, what is given in the question means if you want to limit the armature current to 125 percent, if you want to limit the armature current to 125% during plugging. What is the armature current actual value? Given rated load is 15, so rated load 12 amperes is the actual value. So, the 12 amperes rated means 125% means 1.25 into 12. This should be the current limiting in the armature. This is given clear, 125%. You have to limit. So you know the basic relation that IA during plucking is nothing but V minus V plus EB by RJ. To control it, you are using R external. This is the controlling factor. So he is clearly asking giving you control IA to 1.25 times. 
to control it for 1.25 how much should be the external resistance means you know v is 240 you know eb is 234 and what is the armature resistance 0 0.5 and what should be the external resistance if it should be limited to how much 1.25 times 12 so one point two five into one so